Alright, hello class. Today I'm going to be presenting the German Wunderwaffe. I really hope you enjoy. Alright, so in 1942 the German army established the Wunderwaffe, which was a uh, secret weapons program that was made to develop weapons of mass destruction or any weapons that could help them win the war. And shown here you can see a couple of examples such as the P-1000 uh, Land Cruiser Rat, which is a 1000 ton tank. It had two naval guns on the top and it was just supposed to be huge and ridiculous and supposed to be virtually unstoppable. And a, um, right to the right of it you can see a uh, ME-163 Comet, which was made to be a bomber interceptor. And it looks like a jet, but it was actually a rocket. And so it would blast up, it would intercept whatever bombers were above, and then it would actually glide back down because it didn't have enough fuel to actually make a guided descent. So it would glide back down and usually skid along the runway because it also didn't have landing gear. Alright, and uh, here's a couple more examples, such as this tank that was made to roll over mines and this um, experimental jet bomber. Alright, so usually in the very beginning of the war, the Germans uh, mostly focused on bombing London to lower morale of the uh, British people. But the British um, established some very new and advanced uh, radar technology. And it was very, very good at detecting German aircraft, and it could give them a super early warning about whenever um, any German bombers were coming by, and it resulted in many of them getting shot down, because the British knew exactly when they were coming, how long they had, and how many um, bombers they had to intercept. All right, and so to counter this, the German Wunderwaffe developed the um, Horton 229, which was a uh, stealth aircraft that was actually made out of wood, so it would absorb all of the, uh, or at least not uh, most of the um, uh, radar waves that were coming in and detecting it, so it would have like the flight presence of w uh, what a bird would on the program, so it wouldn't even detect them uh, as they were flying in, and they were going to be used to take out the radi uh, radar stations so they can come through and bomb the rest of London and the rest of Britain. But, however, they only had two successful um, test flights before the war ended, and they did try to do one more, but it resulted in the plane crashing and burning up. All right, and then they, um, the Germans also developed the V, right, which was also considered the very first successful long-range ballistic missile. But again, they were very, very inaccurate, so they often ended up just landing in the English Channel. So they usually never even hit England to begin with, or they just landed in some random patch of countryside. But by the end of the war, they did end up uh, killing 2,724 2, British citizens. And um, as you can see here, there's a it would, when they did the hit, they caused a lot of destruction. They could cause damage to a whole entire city block. And right here you can see a memorial for um, victims to a V-2 missile. Uh, right here what you can see is a V-1 uh, cruise missile, which was actually the very first cruise missile ever made. And... Um, it would, like, they would launch it from Germany and it would fly over and it would, um, just, like, it would also have, like, a really loud siren, so it would also cause panic, so whenever British citizens hear it, they would often panic because they would hear the siren coming and they wouldn't know where it would be coming from. But again, the British radar systems could actually detect these, and so the, what they would do to get around these would actually, um, be, they would deploy a Spitfire, and they would have it climb super high and dive down on the um, V-1. And what they would do is they'd fly right next to it and actually tip the wing of the V-1 and knock it off course. So they would completely spin out the rocket and then have it fly off into either the English Channel or some random patch of countryside instead of uh, hitting London. And the uh, Germans also developed the very first um, uh, guided missile, or guided bomb. And it was called the uh, Fritz X, and it was guided using radio waves and um, fins, and it was also very often equipped with a flare. So the person, like, so they would drop it from a plane, and you would see it falling down from the plane, and they would guide it using a um, radio controls, and it would um, hit whatever it was aiming at. But again, since it was equipped with a flare, it would very often get shot out of the sky, or at least like knocked off course by some type of anti-air fire. And um, the Wunderwaffe also worked on some helicopters, but they, however, they were very, very early and could not really be used in any reasonable sense because they would just get blasted out of the sky by any like small arms fire even because they were just very, they were essentially just frames at the time. But they were going to be used as um, scout aircraft, but again, never quite made it out of the prototype stage. 
But of course, the Nazis were also working on um, atomic bombs, like almost every other nation was at the time, to be the um, one-all, end-all weapon. But by the time they actually got around to the end of development, um, both the USSR and the US were closing in on both sides on the German um, territory. So they needed to try to focus on defending Berlin and the rest of Germany instead of developing the atomic bomb. So they had to pause that. All right. Uh, thank you very much for watching my video. really appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, have a good, wonderful day.